Okay, today what we're going to do, we're going to do some reinforcement learning. So um, we're gonna make program learn how to balance something. Uh, we're gonna use like the simplest uh, setup and uh, maybe in other videos we're gonna do something a bit more complicated. So we're gonna go ahead and go into a gym. Uh, it's the OpenAI uh, development environment where you can train on different things um, they have everything set up so for example this is one of their um, uh, game pendulum and you have space invader you can train something on this you have, you have stuff you have lunar lander you can train a bunch of stuff in our case it will be um, the simplest one it will be the, the stick uh, balancing this thing so we're gonna try to balance uh, train something to balance a stick and make it not move uh, past a certain threshold so um, what do we have for this uh, it looks like this right you're gonna move either to the left or to the right this is your input and um, every time you have an observation which is uh, how this this thing is doing so you have uh, his position in the x-axis, the position of this cart, uh, his velocity, how fast the thing moving, the, um, and the angle of the, the stick and the angular velocity of the stick, how fast it's dropping down or up. So that's what you have. Um, and yeah, we're going to use reinforcement learning for those that are not familiar. Uh, in your reinforcement, reinforcement learning, you have an agent. Any, an agent that is in a environment and you're training this agent to maximize the reward in the environment with some criteria so the agent will do some action and the environment will give him observation and reward right so if the agent at the beginning do some random action and you mess up the environment will not give him a reward he will um, give it either a negative reward or no reward and there's a bunch of observation about what is the current state. So um, it's this idea of states and action and reward and observation that we're gonna um, use. Why I'm using OpenAI Gym? It's because they provide the environment, so we don't have to uh, do it ourselves. Um, that's it. In this uh, exercise, they consider the problem solved. If um, so they uh, say that the problem is solved if you can get an average reward of 189 over 100 consecutive trials so you have to hold the stick for 189 frame for 100 consecutive trials so how fast can you get to that how f how much training do you need to get to that um, there's some algorithm over here those this guy need a lot of episode before solving the problem uh, some of them cheated and um, our solution will be a bit of a mix of uh, be a bit about 200 uh, frame so um, 200 episodes sorry so what we're going to use we're going to use Python uh, the code's already written I'm going to walk you through it and we're going to use uh, gem and Q learning. so Q learning in essence is uh, this idea of states and how you move from one state to the other and how you're going to maximize the, the reward um, depending on which action you do on which state. So for this to work uh, properly, you have to have a good idea of what the states are, right? You cannot have uh, an infinite amount of state because then your table is infinite because you're creating this table. Let's say you have two possible states and two action, right? You're gonna do either action one or two, depending on uh, are you in state one or state two, and which one maximize the reward. And how do you know which one maximize the reward? Is when you're gonna train, you're gonna have this formula. So um, the alpha here is the learning rate, so how fast, how much you want to change your key value every time. And this is the current state, right? The current key value for this state, plus. Uh, alpha times uh, the reward plus the gamma gamma is the discount factor so how much uh, importance you want to give to future reward so if your problem 
is uh, really uh, designed for uh, immediate action. You're going to have a small gamma. If uh, it's long term that, that count as uh, more, more, the gamma will be higher. And then here it's the next state. So you have to calculate the current state and the next state. That's pretty much it. And in here you're going to add some epsilon. Um, in the training, you have, you're going to have to have an epsilon over here so that uh, if uh, are you going to do random stuff or not, depending on the epsilon. If uh, you, you like, um, if you don't have an epsilon where you, you don't, you're never doing random stuff, you're never trying something different, you're going to converge too quickly into a solution. Um, I'm going to give you those links um, if you want to learn more about it, but it's simple. Like it's a, one of the simplest algorithm for reinforcement learning. So let's look at our algorithm. I have over here something uh, to update the parameter. This is just an upper function. And here I have something that discretize uh, a value, a float value into uh, index from zero to number of bucket. We have to discretize the thing because like I said, you cannot have infinite state. So we're gonna have a bunch of states possible and uh, those will, be, will depend on what we need. The more states you have, the longer it will take to uh, uh, to train. If you have, let's say, two states, it will not take that much um, time to train. So this is to put the value with where in where where this value should fit in those buckets, in which bucket should it fit? So uh, map value to a bucket. Here I have some positional, um, some maximum and minimal value for everything. Um, I, did, I did some tests beforehand to know uh, how far and how, what is the minimum and maximum of, of those, uh, of the velocity, the angle, the angular velocity, and the position, what, what are those minimum and maximum? And I use those to uh, discretize the thing properly because here I've set the number of buckets for exposition and velocity to three um, because that worked better. And here uh, for angular velocity and angle, to seven, uh, I, I've, I've just tested those hyperparameters and I picked those that uh, give something that is uh, cool to watch. Um, actually, I didn't, I didn't use those two because if you think about it, the angle and the angular velocity is what counts. Uh, the position doesn't count too much because uh, you're trying to, like, you start at the middle if, if you, you make sure that the angle is not too drastic, you will not get to the end of the, of the, of the window before the episode stop, right? So I'm using those two. And here I'm making my queue table, let's set everything to zero. So I have two possible, um, two possible state. So, uh, sorry, number of, number of action equal to. So I have two actions that are possible, right? Either I go to the left or to the right. So left is one and right is zero. And here I'm making a table which has, uh, it's a one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three. It's a 3D matrix, basically. So uh, I have one uh, in the x-axis is the angle number of bucket. Here, angular velocity number of bucket, and here the number of action. So it's a seven by seven by two matrix. And in this, I will populate them with the right thing. Those are my hyperparameters. Those are the one that uh, worked the most. Here, this is where the training takes place. So training and testing. I'm actually training for only 200 uh, episodes. After that, it's not training anymore, it's just testing and uh, it worked with 200. So um, I call Jim, I just make the thing, make the environment, and then I do a 600 episode, and I just, um, at first you need to reset and take the first initial observation, and after that, so current episode, this, and after that, uh, I go from a 1 to 189 uh, because past that it doesn't matter I just need to make sure my thing work for 199 
195 uh, frame. So I render each frame and then I get the uh, exposition velocity angle and angular velocity by discrete discretizing the observation using my discretize function over here. And after that, I don't need to print this. After that, I either, either I choose a random action or I uh, use the best thing, the cube table. So I either take a random action or I take the, the optimal action for this current state that we are in right now. Um, that's pretty much it. And here I have uh, my epsilon. So I am always, when I'm training, sometimes I do random action, sometimes I'm not doing random action, just so that you can uh, learn from different states. And my epsilon actually is quite high, so it will most likely be random at the beginning so that he can check all the possible states but afterward when the i episode is greater than 200 it will stop doing random action and we'll just get to the queue table every time that's pretty much that and then i get the next uh, observation so here get the next observation okay get the next observation I discretize those next observation and then this is my formula for updating the value in the Q table right so um, I my O value is over here with those uh, those values and then my next maximum is equal to this right I just get my next maximum after that my new value will be uh, with this remember this is this formula um, this one that we looked at so this this formula for the q value and after that i just put it i replace this value in the q table so even though i'm not uh, exploring anymore uh, after 200 i will still be updating the q value i will still get better and better and after that i just make this observation the next observation equal uh, to my current observation and if i'm done the episode I just break and I go to the next episode so that's pretty much that let's look at how this thing behaves okay so you see right now so we're at episode 22 and we, we, we last for about 15 time step Something, sometime a bit more, but it's it's pretty bad right now. It's just testing a lot of stuff. But as you can see, sometimes he, he, he's able to uh, to hold the thing a bit longer than uh, than before. Right now, you see that was uh, a 54. Uh, that was a bit uh, 40. This one was a 56. It get better and better, but he's doing a lot of random stuff right now. He's just trying a bunch of stuff uh, to see. Um, which one will uh, stick better and uh, give the an optimal values? Um, once you get to 200, you will see it will be um, should be uh, way better. All right, so we're back. Um, I had to tune in the parameters again because it was uh, not optimal. Um, I've tuned them just a bit and now he, after 200 episodes it get, it's getting the thing right every time. What did I change? I changed um, the alpha and also the epsilon and the gamma. So it's learning a bit uh, more drastically um, and um, it's doing less uh, random exploration at the beginning. So now we got it every time. So every time he's doing the right Thing. Um, he has a tendency to go to the right right now because of the way he's wobbling the thing but it doesn't matter because when the, by the time he gets here it's been 199 95 uh, frame so he's safe so that's it
this kid is it's quite good doing this stuff on its own um, by just selecting the right action for the right state he's in right now if he had more time to train I think he would be a bit better um, could maybe train it a bit more but uh, that's not the point of it this it was just to to uh, like get started with reinforcement learning and seeing that we can do something that is quite um, uh, quite complicated if you think about it in a short amount of time so thank you very much uh, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and if you have any requests or comments just leave them down below and see you in the next one